Thank you for tuning in to Cop with Comic. I'm Brian Cop, and we're here with comic Dan Goodman. Dan Goodman, how the hell are you? I'm doing great. Oh, good. Thanks so much for uh, chatting me up today. And I want to talk to you. Uh, well, first, I mean, where can people find you online during this whole quarantine mess? And then where, you know, where can people normally find a uh, stick sh- a pole in it um, when you guys are doing that in New York City? I guess in the meantime, they can find that on Zoom. Yeah, the way we moved the show to Zoom, uh, you can find me at Get Dan Goodman at uh, Instagram, Dan Goodman on Facebook. Instagram is where I'm posting a lot of videos right now. And uh, stick a pole in it. You can go to stickapole.com. Or Facebook stick it or Instagram stick it. All the stick it's. I'll let you figure out the spelling. It's an adventure every time. But <laughs> most of the time, I, we, people find us because we're the only goddamn comedy and pole dancing show out there. So normally you type in comedy and pole dancing and then uh, so whatever goofy version of stick it <laughs> that you manage to spell, we'll, uh, you'll, you'll find us. Everybody will spell it different, but they'll all end up in the same place. Yeah. And so, I, yeah. I, my, my favorite, everyone misremembers it and they're like, the stick you do the stick a pole and <laughs> it's great sorry so how, yeah so it sounds like you you know you it's it, it's origin story is out of a short film you did that had strippers like you and yeah. you and joanna ross produced a short i don't know if i said diane ross but yeah joanna ross you produced a short film that had strippers in it and you were like wouldn't it be cool if we mixed strippers in comedy and so how yeah you know, what's the origin story? How can you flesh it out? But also, sure. how do, how the hell does it work for somebody who's never seen it? And how's it going to work on Zoom? Yeah, so we, we um, let's see. Let's start. I'll, I'll start off with just how it basically works. It's, it's uh, you know, comics and pole dancers alternate the stage. So either me or Joanna will host. We do comedy up top. You bring on a pole dancer. They don't dance the song for about three minutes. And then... After that, we bring on a comic. And so it's kind of like, actually, it sounds like this crazy thing that seems real, like, new. But in a lot of ways, it, it works just like a traditional, like, nightclub show. Like, almost yeah. like, like it, it's not, it doesn't have a 1950s vibe. But it's basically like what, when you would go to an old school nightclub, that's kind of what you would see. It's like, you'd see a singer, you'd see a dancer, you'd see a comedian. And so it's just very, uh, I think it's, it, it's actually more traditional than it might even sound. Yeah, because right, there's, like, no, there's no break in entertainment. I think there was a bigger stand-up who was like, yeah, back in the day, I started out doing stand-up between strippers. Right. And so uh, so it's kind of nice. Like, while the girls are, are there getting all getting all ready and stuff like that, um, you're, you know, the comedian's breaking it up and vice versa. Yeah, it's, I'll be honest. I'm not, it's not that fun to watch 90 minutes of pole dancing. And <laughs> it's very, like, uh, you know, you get, you're impressed at first, and then you watch... It's like, I don't know if you ever watched like figure skating gymnastics in the Olympics. You, you're like, oh, that's incredible. And then you see like 12 triple sow cows in a row and you're like, I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, move on to something, something cooler than that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, so, th- so th- that's basically how the show works. How it got started actually is we were, uh, I shot a short film that was based on my joke that I told people I was going to make this movie called Skinja. And it's about a stripper by night, ninja by later that night. <laughs> and, it's, you know, actually another comedian was like, dude, we can make, we can shoot that. And I was like, how are we going to shoot that? And he's like, I know this really great DP uh, and he will do it. And I was like, oh shit, I guess we could. <laughs> and oh shit, so, this shit, that shit just got real. Yeah. And I was like, I, I never thought about it. And he was like, just shoot the trailer. Like, it was kind of like, we don't, we're not going to, I like, he made it much simpler and we did a Kickstarter for it, and we back when like we were like not everyone was uh, doing a GoFundMe for, so they can like go to Florida or what, <laughs> like you know like it's very it, it was a lot less saturated back then. I don't know if I would crowdfund again just yeah. because I feel like now it's like people are asking for a lot for a lot of different things. But so we we crowd fundraise and we hit our goal really quickly, which is amazing. Wow. And uh, and so we made this two minute thing. It, I'm really proud of it. You can still look up if you go look Google Skinja. Uh, well, you can because see the, it, because it involves stripping and ninjas, I'm kind of interested in what the gift was. Like, if I were to donate to that GoFundMe or Kickstarter, what do I receive? The stripper or the ninja? Uh, no, you receive some killer Skinja merch. Okay, and <laughs> some, yeah, that could uh, get pretty, pretty funny, I would think. Yeah, it was good. It, it was it, it was a really positive experience, and uh, some DV a lot. Of, that, this was 2012, so there was DVDs. 
I don't know if any, any of your listeners remember what those are. Um, they, they used to, you, they could even play them in your computer or your TV. It's a lost technology. And uh, whatchamacallit. So, so, we, so we did the, the short film and we were trying to get the feature film made. But actually in the interim, um, you know, a good friend of ours had breast cancer quite young. And Joanna was like, We're, we should do a fundraiser for her. And I was like, okay, I don't know uh, how to do that. I've never done one. She was like, let's just, we, we know a bunch of poll dancers and a bunch of comedians. Like, let's, that's, that's a show. And I'm like, I don't know if that's a show. And she's like, oh, it's a show. <laughs> oh, it's and I'm a like, show. okay. She see, yeah, she could see five years in the future. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, she was like, no, it's definitely a show. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going with this. Let's do it. And never you know, doubt her again. Damn. Yeah. Uh, and I was just, you know, we kind of were, and it was also very low stakes, right? Cause you're like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a fundraiser and everyone will just, you know, they're there to support our friend, and that that's all that really matters. Right. So you're not yeah. like sweating these details in the same, the kind of same way you would if it was just a show show. Right. And it worked. I mean, at it one worked. point, did, like, was it that first night that was a sm smash success that you knew it had legs? And kind of what about it? Like, are these people like, you know, the, the pole dancers, are they just kind of in, I mean, they're not stripping. I mean, they're just in no. uh, what, what close fitting clothing to make the pole dancing go better. And like, at what point did you know it worked? Uh, well, yeah. So one after the first, after the first show, we were like, holy shit, we just raised a ton of money. <sighs> and then, uh, for our friend, which felt obviously amazing. And, uh, and we, and we, I was like, it works. I just remember like sitting there watching. It was, there was a, it was a crazy thing. Like neither one of us wanted to host the show. And cause we're like, ah, it's weird. So we had, uh, hired a drag queen named Blackie O Nasty. Yes. Miss Blackie, if you're nasty. And <laughs> she, she showed up like two hours late. You know, and when she didn't show, Joanna was like, fuck it. I'm going to host the show. Ah. And and we were like, and it went great. And it wasn't as hard as we thought, you know, and it, it, and so I was sitting there watching and I was like, wow, this works. I don't know why it works, but it works. And so pretty much after that first one, we did like a test. We were like, uh, the, the show was in September and then we like kind of like took a, a moment to figure out like, Hey, can we do this again? And then we got another date at this club that actually happened to have polls, which, <laughs> which was really in retrospect crazy because there's really yeah. no, there's no venue. I totally forgot about this. It's been so long, but like basically the main reason this got this worked was that, um, there was a venue with polls like yeah. in the venue and most of the pole dancers really train and perform in their pole dancing studio, right? Yeah. It's not really, there's no alcohol there. It's, you, they bring out folding chairs for the recitals, you know, yeah. for the graduating students and stuff, but it's not the same as like a show, right? Yeah. And so there's this place called Our Bar on Bowery that no longer exists. But for the first two years of our show, we, they, the poles were just already bolted into the venue and, and it made it really easy. And, uh, like, and so, yeah, we did it in September was the, the benefit. And then December we were like, let's do it. And, uh, the, we, we did it and the, the, the test show wasn't maybe as packed as the, the benefit, but then, yeah. cause we had it on like Tuesday. And then what happened was the next show after that was on Saturday night. Like we wanted, we finally got like a, the date we wanted from the venue and it was on at the end of January and like Time Out New York featured the show back when like Time Out New York actually like any people would buy it or pick it up for free. <laughs> and it, we, we turned people away. It was crazy. Like it was totally a shock. And then it was like classic like nightclub stuff where we're like in the basement of this crump like rock bar with poles. And like we have like just piles of cash. Yeah, <laughs> being handed, wow. to, being we, handed to us and we're like oh fuck what do we do do, do you think and that I've i mean seen, do you think this that is, work, works because it breaks the ice before the comedian like it's easier to be a comedian at one of those shows just because there were people gyrating around before i got up there um i would say this in the beginning it would the, there were because there were a lot of pole dancers at the show 
it was they, they'd never seen comedy before. <laughs> so like, uh, you know, actually, I, I actually would. It's so funny. It's like a comic. You you can't you don't realize this, but I think most of the population is not. That maybe they've been to a Sam comedy club once in their life. Yeah. They they kind of know what it is, but a lot of times they haven't ever been. And if, especially if they're younger, like, you know, like 20s, 20s, early 30s, they might have never been to a comedy club or they just went for their friends, like funniest teacher contest or whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so like a lot of them hadn't seen comedy before. So I think at first it was kind of like, oh, this is amazing. And then some, a comic would say something they didn't like. And they'd be like, well, you can't, duh, you can't say that. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, they can. It's very, it's very easy. Uh, and so I, I think now, uh, either way, it doesn't, I think it always the thing that worked is that the show kind of resets after each performer. Like you yeah. hear some funny jokes, it's good. And then the dancer comes on, and you're like, oh, this is new and different. Yeah, the cleanses, dancer cleanses the palate almost. Yeah, like totally. And it's the switch that I think that really works um and so yeah after after the first show like we just were like ah oh, shit we just made a ton of money we have to figure out what what all this means and like what it all looks like and I, that was the other thing is like we had no idea what to pay anybody yeah. right like we had no idea if we were going to sell tickets or not the venue's taking a cut and it was like this crazy thing of like oh shit we have this this works we have to figure this out uh and then really like the show ran concurrently from then to now uh and like our bar closed we had to move the show yeah how'd you we, find a place with a pole so so, as, so that so after our bar closed we had to provide the pole and then it gets <laughs> it then it gets hard right like i don't know anything about this and i don't know like i don't know how, how handy you are or how how much you know no. about like, no, no, no nothing at all how the fuck do you do that install the pole temporarily how the fuck there's, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how much, how much of this podcast you want to go into pole mechanics, but, uh, <laughs> just enough to let me know that I couldn't do that. How the fuck did you do it? There, there's two ba there's two basic options or actually there's three options. One, there's a portable pole that you set up. It's heavy as shit yeah. and you, it can, it, it doesn't connect to the ceiling. Then there's the, there's a pole that that'll go up to 11 feet, which is, uh, and, and it fits like, you know, like a pull up bar would fit in your doorway. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that, but on the ceiling. It's a pre it uses pressure to like stay in place, oh. and then, and then there's the the third option, which we ended up with now, which is, um, it's ball. You know, there's a a ball bearing bolted into the to the ceiling, and it just and you just uh, screw it in, right? But they, that was they like, let they let you do that. Like after a yeah. while, when they saw you're making money, this venue let you. Right. So basically, we we went to them, and they like the reason we're a big reason we're at the place we're at is. Uh, with Drum in New York City on Avenue A and Fifth, is uh, is because they let us be like, yeah, sure, cut cut into the ceiling. It's not a big deal. If not, you know, take we'll take it out. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, that that is that was the big thing. But yeah, I mean that like that two minutes I just spent explaining to you about like <laughs> here are the three pole options it took like yeah. a ton of time for me to yeah. figure out like oh what do we do? <laughs> yeah, but it's so cool that the venue allowed you to do it because first of all they like money and second of all and more importantly they like dancers. Yeah. Yeah, they could they uh, could do without the comedy, but man, those dancers are <laughs> sexy, right? <laughs> hey, the comics carry the show, you know. Oh, good. The dan the dancers are on stage for all of. If you, there's five dancers on a show, and they total probably about eighteen minutes of stage time total. Yeah. Where the comics are carrying the show, you know, and the and uh, I actually think that after a while, like it's the once we started getting more non pole dancing audience in there. It, it really like changed the balance of the show. And I think there are times where there's definitely been times when comedy was the better part of the show. Yeah. I mean, you cause know? you can get the world-class comics, but my question is the, the pole dancers, like are you getting professional pole dancers and is there a, a finite quantity of them in New York city? Oh, good question. That is a good question. Yes. Okay. We're like, I would say like, uh, we have some of the best pole. I would say day in and day out, we have some of the best pole dancers in the world. Okay. But the, the other, there's like kind of two other centers of pole dancing. Uh, Australia has a huge pro pole dancing community and, um, St. Petersburg, Russia has a lot. It's uh, cool that you know that too, you know, pole mechanics and also what the meccas yeah. for pole dancing are. Yeah. Like there's, there's, 
and uh, you know, obviously LA has a really strong community, but uh, a lot of the dancers in New York has, is a big one. And yeah. at one point there were five, I think there were five really good professional pole dancing studios running at the same time, Shit, which, is, really? which, which is probably more than anybody would ever realize. Yeah. Uh, but you know, what's crazy is like, guess what? Provo, Utah, the, the national champion has a, the, the most recent national pole champion is a studio there, Carly Child. I mean, like, who would ever guess Utah has a pole dancing studio? Is she Mormon? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. And so I, don't I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, these comedians, like, do you have Australians and, and Russians reaching out to you to try to make sure they get on your show next time uh, they, they come through? No, I think <laughs> the problem is we, our, the show doesn't like pay enough to oh. warrant like you flying here. Yeah. But it is a, uh, it is a, it is the, it, there is really no other poll. What's interesting about this is there's no other poll show. Like, there's not this other show that runs continuously. They have like yearly of like a once a year event or a quarterly like showcase, but we're the only thing that's really run. And that, that was another big impetus when we were starting the show is like we were talking to these pole dancers uh, on the set of Skinja, and I was like, you guys are amazing. You don't perform anywhere. And they're like, no, just, just start the studios and the gyms. Like, that's kind of it. And we were like, what do you, that's impossible. Like how you guys, you got to be in front of an audience. And me and Joanna were kind of like, Oh, the, I can't believe these people aren't performing. Yeah. It, it was like secondary to all the other things. But in the back of our head, we were like, Oh, we got to get these people more reps in front of an audience. It's yeah. it, they're too talented. Like you can't, can't be a great performer and performing in front of your friends, you yeah. know? Or a gym full of, or a studio is full of students. And I guess, um, how often was it then? And then, um, what are you doing now that it's on Zoom? So the, the show was, we actually, after years of being just once a month, we, for the last two years, we were really excited that we were selling enough tickets that we moved to Friday and Saturday. So twice, like basically one weekend a month. And oh. uh, that was a huge accomplishment for us. And we kind of didn't know, realize how much harder it would be. Um, but we were rocking and rolling with that. And then now we weren't going to do, you know, our, we were going to do a Led Zeppelin, sh our, our Led Zeppelin show in March got canceled. And, uh, I, I forget like none of the, the viewers don't know, or listeners don't know the, uh, we always have a musical theme. Oh, okay. So all the dancers dance to like one, like the Zeppelin show, it's going to be all Zeppelin, you know, obviously okay. all, all the dancers are performing different Led Zeppelin songs. Uh, so the Zeppelin show got canceled in March and then we were not going to do an online show comedy with no audience is rough, yeah. you know, and I didn't want to host a zoom meeting for pole dancing. Like that doesn't <laughs> sound fun. Uh, and so, but we watched some zoom shows online and then we were like, this isn't bad. Yeah. I kind of, we're kind of like, I'm like, it's better than we thought. And then so we did our show in April. It was a, a quarantine edition where we kind of like all the songs were like related to the quarantine, meaning like the first song was like, don't uh, the police don't stand so close to me. <laughs> and then we did uh, George Thorogood's I Drink Alone. And Mad they, they can dance to that. They can, uh, yeah. they can be on the pole to don't stand so close to me. Huh? Any, I would say any um, pop song, any, any song that's popular, you can pole dance to, you know? Yeah. Like we I, did, I drink alone though. Yeah. I mean, we did, we did a, the, I think one of, some of our best shows have been like, we did a Frank Sinatra show. Uh, Sinatra on the pole is awesome. You know, <laughs> the Beatles on the pole was awesome. You know, I love, how, really, you say, I love how you say that now, you know, Elvis on the pole, you know, without, we parallel. tried, we it. thought about it. I, the, Elvis doesn't have as deep. Uh, some of the, you know, it's weird. Frank Sinatra doesn't sound as dated as Elvis. Oh wow! And I I would try, I was kind of surprised we we because we thought about doing like you know once we did the Sinatra show we were like what else is possible here and it's interesting like some some of the artists sound more dated than others. We're, uh, Sinatra always has that really classic because it's mostly just vocals that it, it it's you know the music's less pronounced and okay. I think it's just that classic sound. Okay, um, but then on on Zoom like um you know. You right. Know, how, how you know if I get a ticket and you know do I go to Eventbrite and get a ticket and what can I expect as far as what I'm seeing on the Zoom screen at gotcha. any one time? I suppose I'm just seeing the dancer, then the comic, and then um, are so, you guys on your end seeing the audience? Uh, like as a comedian, are you watching the audience or hearing them laugh? 
So what we so what we do is it's on brown paper tickets, and we um, me and Joanna host from our living room, okay. and uh, our living room slash kitchen slash everything. Because <laughs> you're still in New York. Apartment. Yeah, you're still in New York. I take it. Yeah, we're still in New York, <laughs> and like, <laughs> uh, so, so we host from our living room, and we introduce the comics and the pole dancers, and we switch them. Like we're kind of the control center, right? Like a Zoom meeting. Yeah. We we switch we switch between the performers and um, that we mute and unmute the audience to clap before and after the performer. Oh, okay, um, yeah, that's that's what I'm hearing. That you you kind of unmute for an applause break at the end. Yeah, that seems to be the industry. That's the, I think I talked about uh, talked to Joe Gorman earlier today, and he's saying that that's what they're doing too. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's not the same. And I and I would say the last show we did, comics were doing. Like I didn't, none of us, I think no, none of us really did our jokes. Mm -hmm. Like I did like, um, it, you know, it's funny. It's kind of like actually doing comedy on a, like for a late night show, which is like, they're more like sketches bits. Like I, you know, I did a confessional segment from my bathroom to get away from Joanna. Uh, <laughs> I did a PowerPoint presentation on how Andrew Cuomo does PowerPoint, okay. you know, and like, it, you know, they're almost like late night bits where you're, like it's it's comedy but it's not stand up right like okay. um because you know i don't think anybody you don't want to do your jokes to nobody and and not hear a reaction right so you have to do like confessional style things like i don't know if you've seen like like ted alexandro is doing something really great it's not it's not his stand up but it's just him being funny to camera right okay. like it's hard i i don't i don't think anybody knows really what to do um but, you know, I feel like just doing jokes to thin air doesn't feel good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But the last show was really uh, we, we sat there and we watched it later to be like kind of figure out like, oh, what could we do better? And I was like, this is better than a lot of the late night shows that are out there. You yeah, know, like we, like, we can we cannot improve at all. <laughs> no, definitely. There were definitely things like that. But I, I was like, we weren't again. We, me and Jordan were like, oh, what's this going to be? Is this going to be OK? We don't have to do this show right and right. i was like ah oh, this is really it came off really good and i think there's a certain uh you know i like i i watch like i'll still watch the late show with stephen colbert or, or jimmy kimmel and i think the only thing that that's missing from those shows is a little bit of the intimacy yeah. and like the zoom meeting is kind of like it's cool there's a chat running like the there's a couple hundred people watching and they're interacting really? with you. And like, so I can say, I can say, I like that move or I like that joke via chat. And then other people can kind of chime in and say, I like yeah, it too. And like, because I'm like, being, I'm being muted. And so it feels like, you know, I can't have my voice heard as far as, Oh, I liked what just happened unless I'm able to chat too. So that's really neat that you guys do that. Yeah. Like there's, it's not, you know, like it's funny. It's like when I watch like Colbert or Kimmel, they are kind of doing bits to thin air and then you call yeah. a celebrity on a Skype or a zoom call and you're like, it all feels very sterile. And I will say this, that I was impressed that like by doing it as a zoom meeting and not like, um, just like a video conference or something gave it a little more, uh, like intimacy and the chat was, uh, helps. And then also we heard that like some people had put up a separate computer, like they were watching on their computer and then, they opened a separate Zoom meeting on their phones with their friends to make it oh. feel like, uh, like we're at the show together. And you guys could start encouraging that as something you know people might want to do. Yeah, I like. I have to think. I I think there's a way with Zoom breakout rooms. I don't know how it works. It's okay. I never want well, to spend this much time with the technology. <laughs> but well, you're 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 about to get as good at that as you got at at pole mechanics. Oh, I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they can they they just Google around. First of all, they can follow you, Daniel Daniel Goodman on Twitter. Uh, um, but the, yeah. but also stick stick a poll in it. They can find out. But also brown paper tickets is where they'll get it. Yeah, and, uh, and then it, when will it happen? Too is it, is it every week or is it every month? It's every month. Okay. Uh, our next show is actually next Saturday, the twenty third. Okay. And uh, you know, get Dan Goodman on Instagram. It's probably my, my most active account. Okay. And uh, yeah, please come by. It's a great show. And if you need more information. You can go to stickapole.com. Dude, just Google it. You're going to find it. Yeah. Stick a pole, a stick, stick a pole in it or whatever, and it, it comes up to stick a pole. And it's, and I, I think that I'm looking forward to get Dan Goodman because I'm hoping that you have a clip of a pole dancer or two. Is that correct or no? Yeah. If, or, not, or, you're, if not, you're missing out. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm definitely uh, at Facebook, uh, in Facebook and Instagram at stick it. We'll give you tons of 
uh, ideas about what the show is and clips from the show and all, all that good stuff. Dude, I can't wait. Dan Goodman, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day, brother.